There was a survey that was done, I believe it was Deloitte, on individuals and asking them why they're leaving. And, and the pandemic does not feature as number one reason for the reason they're leaving. And it's actually not even the top five. A lot of them have to do with fit with manager, fit with job, fit with the team, fit with the company. So there's a lot that we're doing in terms of making sure that culturally, there's a fit culturally, that learning and development is being seen as key to this. And then that diversity, equity, and inclusion is always trying to open up those talent pools and seek talent in, in places that traditionally maybe companies haven't, haven't seen, right? So we're going through the same thing. One of the things we do in terms of is to sort of facilitate learning and coaching in the flow of work, right? So a lot of companies will say, okay, we are going to include uh, DNI training and just do it once a year as part of like compliance. So just taking Diego's message one step further which is about learning. Well, who do we teach and what do we teach them? I want to put a what if question for you. What if $8 billion that we spend a year on DEI, we marry up with the $14 billion that we spend on leadership training. And rather than have two different strategies, we actually have one unified strategy around culture. Culture is a, a learned behavior. It's not a product. It's not a byproduct. It's, it's through behavior. And we therefore can create our own cultures by the actions that we take. And if I come from a school of where well, everyone's a leader. It's not just the CEO and the C-suite. You think about it, leadership's a choice. It's a choice to positively influence people. So we all actually have a choice, but let's, we all look up to our leaders. I have a wonderful slide with a, with a zebra. Leadership is the shadow that you, you leave behind you. The next slide is a case of what we potentially do to train people to lead with a D and I, D, E, I, thought and mindset because leadership is about how you think and how you behave and how you think and how you behave is a culture and I just uh, I always put culture as the the worst behavior that you're willing to tolerate is the culture of your business so if you have an asshole manager that is your culture if you're willing to accept an asshole on the front lines and that becomes your culture so culture is the worst behavior you're willing to accept and tolerate that is your culture uh, we're going to go into an activity in a moment where we're going to ask you which one of these topics most resonates with you. Why don't we take the, the first group and which was the first one, the strategies group? We talked about a couple of ways of measuring is using an inclusion assessment and certainly tracking numbers and seeing trends when it comes to recruitment and attrition. And then just Dirk was just talking about using, really leveraging ERGs, BRGs, and creating some cohort learning opportunities where you go, you, you do a learning, you come back, you discuss, and there's a little bit more accountability there. We talked about even a broader description of what DEI looks like. When it comes to recruiting, it's not, it could be somebody who traditionally you would want somebody to have a bachelor's. It may mean that they don't have a bachelor's, but they have other experiences. I'm happy to get it started and have others chime in with their thoughts. I thought this one was really interesting because the partnership between learning and development and these groups, I really see it as at least two way. There are things we can do to benefit from these groups and engage them in helping ensure that our our products, our work, our culture is representative and inclusive and diverse, such as asking them for input, reviewing things. Um, this number five on this list was my pet peeve because two years ago, I4CP shared research that who drives impact, DNI impact in the organization. L&D was really low on the list. <laughs> and that just doesn't seem appropriate given how much power we can have available for driving, but I don't think we can drive it ourselves because we tend to be more order takers. It's, if a DNI group comes to us and asks for some help, we probably would help them or we might have off the shelf content. But if we co-create solutions with the DNI organizations and our internally, we can drive impact by working together more effectively as both Jane and Joe have mentioned. 